Starship is back at the launch site and ready for some stress testing. The Polaris Dawn crew completes their first week of training. Starlink is now available for your RVs. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. On Thursday morning, SpaceX rolled Starship 24 down Highway 4 from the high bay to the launch site in Boca Chica, Texas. Ship 24 is currently the expected vehicle to attempt the first orbital flight for the Mars rocket design. And they didn't waste any time. Starship Gazer captured footage of the spaceship venting that same day. And today, Lab Padre's live cams recorded some tank farm vintage. We can expect further stress testing next week. 24's booster, number seven, is still back up the road in the Mega Bay, receiving presumably all 33 of its Raptor 2 engines. The outer ring of its booster engines were seen delivered on site. The crew of Polaris Dawn, the first mission to conduct an EVA to prepare SpaceX for future manned starship missions, completed their first training event last week, participating in pool and ocean scuba dives. This week, the team appears to be in the mountains doing team building activities and learning how to climb. I assume they're at Mount Rainier where Inspiration4 went. Also this week, Space Explored reported they received word through back channel emails with NASA employees that Axiom 1's Dragon Capsule's Draco engines leaked hypergolic propellant during their return to Earth, which then made its way into Endeavor's heat shield, creating a dangerous situation during their re-entry. However, Space Explored later released a statement from NASA calling the rumors untrue. There was no hypergolic leak nor any contamination with the heat shield causing excessive wear. However, they did say earlier this month that NASA and SpaceX did test a new heat shield for the upcoming Crew-5 mission, but it did not pass. There was a manufacturing defect, so the test did what it was supposed to do, find flaws. On Wednesday afternoon, SpaceX launched their fifth dedicated small sat rideshare mission to Earth orbit, Transporter 5. The booster lifting off for an eighth time from Slick 40 at the Cape and landing back on the coast at landing zone one. The 59 spacecraft on board the Falcon 9 rocket were pushed by the upper stage to their deployment altitude and over the course of about 15 minutes underwent separation. Thanks for flying SpaceX. The company announced on Monday that they are now offering mobile Starlink service for larger vehicles called Starlink for RVs. There's currently no wait list for the $135 a month plan, even if you're like me and are currently on the wait list for residential service. Users can expect high speed, low latency internet in areas marked available and notably slower speeds during peak hours of usage because until they get more satellites up, residential customers are the priority. Elon warned that the antenna is too big for cars and will void the warranty if you try it. New users are noticing a friendlier demeanor with their former internet providers as they try to cancel their broadband service. Apparently, these corporations have no other choice but to be friendly to customers when they can't lobby the government for special treatment. Funny how free market capitalism works, isn't it? The CCP isn't a fan, though. The South China Morning Post reported that Chinese military researchers are vocalizing their support for the country's ability to disable or destroy Starlink satellites. A study was conducted by a researcher with the Beijing Institute of Tracking and Telecommunications under the Strategic Support Force and co-authored by several senior scientists in China's defense industry. The CCP and the military's tentacles have a notoriously far reach into every aspect of the country's public and private sectors. And the paper urged China to develop anti-satellite capabilities, including surveillance systems to track and monitor every Starlink satellite. Quote, a combination of soft and hard kill methods should be adopted to make some Starlink satellites lose their functions and destroy the Constellation's operating system, said the paper published in the domestic peer-reviewed journal Modern Defense Technology. According to publicly available information, China has already been working on microwave technology that can jam comms or burn out electronics, as well as lasers for blinding or damaging satellites, nanosats that can be launched in swarms to cripple bigger satellites, and cyber weapons for hacking the communication network. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. We're back to catch up on the latest goings on with Boeing's Starliner capsule. On Friday night last week, the uncrewed crew capsule overcame more technical glitches to autonomously dock with the space station for its second test flight. This came after a brief pause due to a problem with the backup system on the docking mechanism in the nose of the ship. But after resetting it, all was good to go. 
Starliner also experienced problems with four of its thrusters during the ascent to the ISS, but NASA and Boeing are confident the issues aren't serious and appear to be easy fixes. Six days later, on May 25th at 2.36 p.m. Eastern, Starliner undocked and maneuvered itself away from the station, and about four hours after that, jettisoned the service module and re-entered the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. It then let loose of its forward heat shield to expose two drug chutes bra, which were cut a minute later so the capsule could mortar deploy three pilot chutes to pull out the reef mains. After unreefing those, the base heat shield vacated the area so the airbags could deploy for a soft touchdown in the desert. And touchdown Starliner. We're touching down in the desert of New Mexico, marking the completion of orbital flight test two. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Shout out to my supporters and the locals community. For just $5 a month, you can back the channel and gain access to exclusive member only content. Link below. Do have a nominal weekend and until next time, Godspeed.